Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Robert Mercer, and I am so excited to welcome you to our modern worship service. If you're worshiping with us online, we want to extend a very special welcome to you as well. Here at our church, we believe that everyone is important and has something to bring, so let's give Jesus our best. And one of the ways we value that everyone is important is we want to learn names, which is something that I'm really bad at. So I want to encourage you to wear a name tag if you would like. Uh, one of our name tags at the welcome desk, you got, there's some envelopes there where you can get an Asbury name tag. If you're comfortable, just, you know, just kind of hold your, your hands out as we pray together. Oh God, we thank you for the work of Embrace Alabama Kids and the way that they change lives in the name of Jesus. We pray that your spirit is stirring in the lives of people, stirring to do something incredible and to invite kids into their home. Oh God, thank you. We love you. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, Blake. Let's stand. Let's worship together.
face the day in your presence all our fears are washed away cause when we see
bear your cross as you wait for the crown. Tell the world of the treasure you found. Oh God, we just thank you so much for this time and this moment. Thank you for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Please look with me to, at today's scripture reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. On that same day, two disciples were traveling to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking to each other about everything that had happened. While they were discussing these things, Jesus himself arrived and joined them on their journey. They were prevented from recognizing him. He said to them, what are you talking about as you walk along? They stopped, their faces downcast. The one named Cleop Cleopas replied, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who is unaware of the things that have taken place there over the last few days? He said to them, what things? They said to him, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, because of his powerful deeds and words, he was recognized by God and all the people as a prophet. But our chief priest and our leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. We had hoped that he was the one who would redeem Israel. All these things happened three days ago. But there's more. Some women from our group have left us stunned. They went to the tomb early this morning and didn't find his body. They came to us saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who told them he is alive. Some of those who were with us just went to the tomb and found things just as the women said. They didn't see him. Then Jesus said to them, you foolish people, your dull minds keep you from believing all that the prophets talked about. Wasn't it necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then he interpreted for them the things written about himself in all the scriptures, starting with Moses and going through all the prophets. When they came to Emmaus, he acted as if he was going on ahead, but they urged him saying, stay with us, it's nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. After he took his seat at the table with them, he took the bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Their eyes were opened and they recognized him but he disappeared from their sight. They said to each other, weren't our hearts on fire when he spoke to us along the road and when he explained the scripture for us? May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of scripture. Our hearts and minds are open. Here in modern worship, children are always welcome for the entire service. Our kids ministry does offer children's church. So if you would like to be a part of that, you can meet me in... Um, in the back of the sanctuary, and that will be in room 214. Today, we continue in our sermon series called Like Jesus. You know, Jesus came uh, to the world uh, to show us how to live in, in right relationship with God and with each other to show us how to be faithful people. Uh, now, I'll give a shameless plug, starting this Wednesday night, uh, I'm gonna be leading a study called The Walk, uh, written by Adam Hamilton, uh, where we're gonna look at how we can be like Jesus. I'd love for you to, to join me uh, in that class. Uh, the image of walking with God or God uh, walking with us is found throughout the Bible. It's a metaphor of how we should live in our relationship with God. As the biblical story begins, God is described as walking in the Garden of Eden, looking for Adam and Eve. In Matthew 4, Jesus walked along the seashore, and he came to Simon Peter and to Andrew, and he, and he gives that simple commandment, come, follow me. And, and a few steps later, he calls 
uh, James and John in the same way. And then sometime after that, he, he comes up to Matthew, a tax collector, someone, an unlikely person, and says, come and follow me. God walks in our midst. He searches for us and calls us to be like Jesus. Last week, we talked about how we should see like Jesus, how the cloudy glasses that we wear and view the world keeps us from seeing like Jesus. And today, we're going to dig into what it means to listen like Jesus. But first, I want to tell a joke, and that always makes my family very nervous. But anyway, here it goes. Uh, A man came up to the pastor after the service and said that he needed prayer. And so the pastor said, absolutely. And they went down to the kneeling rail and, and the man knelt and the pastor said, what can I pray for you today? And he said, I need you to pray for my hearing. So the pastor laid his hands on top of the man's head and he prayed for his hearing, said amen and they stand up. And the pastor says, so how's your hearing? And the man goes, well, I don't know. Court's not till Thursday. As some of you will get it in a minute. Uh, we should listen. We should strive to listen like Jesus so that we can meet people where they are. Every day we hear words coming out of people's mouths. However, listening to those words is very, very difficult. You know, according to the Oxford Dictionary, the word hear is defined as to perceive with the ear the sound made by someone or something. But listen is different. To listen is defined as to make an effort to hear something, to be alert and ready to hear something. Now, we do a really good job of hearing, but we don't do a good job of listening. It takes work to truly listen to each other. Uh, What we tend to do is is we tend to listen to people uh, with the goal of figuring out how to move where we want to go rather than meeting people right where they are. And most of the time, we don't even realize that we're doing this. Uh, Here's what I mean by that. Uh, I know we all have at least three different kinds of friends that try to listen to us. There's probably more, but I'm only going to lift up three. The first one is that one upper friend. Do you know who I'm talking about? This is the friend that that you, you share an authentic story with them, And at the end of it, they're like, oh, well, that's nothing. You won't believe what happened to me at work yesterday. And then there's the advice monster friend. Now, now this is the friend that, that, that you share to get something off your chest, and all they want to do is give you advice on how you should have handled the problem or what you should do next. And then... There is the, everything's going to be okay, friend. And these are the people that hate it when things get really, really messy and really, really serious. And they just can't deal with painful situations. And and they'll say things like, you know, it was just God's plan. Or what doesn't kill you will make you stronger. These are all ways we try to stay in control of a situation rather than digging into the messiness of people's lives. Uh, Do you see yourself up there at all? Uh, I'm going to be real with you. Uh, I can see myself in all of them sometimes, but I'm really bad at the advice monster. I am always, that's my go-to is that. I try to fix things rather than just meeting people where they are. In the scripture that Julie read for us today, uh, we have Jesus walking with uh, with two of his disciples who are distraught in the aftermath of the death 
of Jesus. You know, I don't think it's an accident that the first time we actually see the risen Christ in Luke is walking along the road. Because all throughout Luke Luke and the book of Acts, which is Luke's sequel, that is a theme. Jesus is journeying with us as we go through life. Now, these two guys knew Jesus really well, but the story says that they did not recognize him. It's absurd for me to think that these two guys did not recognize him, and just three days ago, they were following the Messiah. The scriptures says this, their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. Who or what prevented their eyes from seeing Jesus? We don't know, but what if, what if the disciples cannot see Jesus because they were not listening? Instead, they already think they know everything that's going on. And, and here's why I say this. Jesus just asked them, you know, what you talking about? And Cleopas responds with this. Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who is unaware of the things that have, have, that have taken place there over the last few days? <laughs> you know, we don't know his tone, but I can imagine that he had some disdain, right? Are you clueless? How in the world can you not know? What if the disciples didn't recognize Jesus because their opinions had already been fully formed? Like, like all of us, their assumptions shape what they talk about. And what they talk about shapes what they hear. Cleopas assumes that Jesus is clueless. And this clueless must make him a visitor. And not just a visitor, but an outsider, one who does not belong. The Greek word that the CEB translates as visitor literally means outside the house. How often do we dismiss people because they're not a part of our tribe? We don't listen because we assume that they are clueless. And the danger for us is just like these two disciples, our bias can lead us to miss Jesus altogether. And not just miss Jesus, but miss what everything that means. Hope, new life, the promise that the worst thing is never the last thing. We should strive to listen like Jesus so that we can meet people right where they are. Uh, one of the things I like to say is that our job is to uh, bridge the gap from, from who we are right now to, to who God is wants us to be. Another way to say this is, is what can we do right now to begin to live like Jesus? This story of Jesus walking alongside these two disciples can give us some good insight in what it means to listen like him. Uh, the first thing we need to do better to be good listeners is to ask questions. Verses 14 through 17. They were talking to each other about everything that had happened. While they were discussing these things, Jesus himself arrived and joined them on their journey. They were prevented from recognizing him. He said, what are you talking about as you walk along? You know, <laughs> one of the things the institutional church has not done well over the years is 
to listen and ask questions. We would prefer a tell it like it is sermon rather than a talk that leaves space for people to wonder and to discover what God is doing in their life. I've said it before, Jesus spends much more time in questions than he does in answers. Uh, the, enlighten, the Enlightenment poet Voltaire says this, judge a man by his questions rather than his answers. Far too many of us focus on having the right answers rather than discovering the right questions. Now, it's no wonder our educational system and our spiritual formation system, for that matter, is set up that way. It's set up for us to discover what the answers are. They focus in, on knowing and understanding how you can get to the correct answer. But as Jesus' followers, our purpose is to listen like him and Jesus asked questions in order to generate dialogue rather than to teach doctrine. When we ask people questions, we get the opportunity to have an authentic encounter with them. Jesus didn't just walk up to his friends and say, hey guys, it's me. Uh, I'm, I'm resurrected. Remember, I told you that the grave couldn't keep me down. No, he didn't do that. He came up beside them as they're walking along, and he just simply said, hey, what's on your mind? If we're going to listen to, like Jesus, and meet people where they are, we have to ask questions. I'm going to give you a challenge this week. I want you, when you engage in conversation with other people, I want you to ask questions rather than just jumping in to your agenda. Just simply say, hey, what's on your mind? For us to, to listen like Jesus, we need to ask questions and we need to be patient. Uh, Y'all know I love to throw the message uh, uh, paraphrase, prayer phase up a prayer a phase? I think I just made up a word. Paraphrase. Okay, I'm not going. <laughs> Eugene Peterson's the message. L listen to verses 25 through 27. Then he said to them, "So thick-headed, so slow-hearted, why can you simply why can't you simply believe all that the prophet said? Don't you see the things had to happen that the Messiah had to suffer?" and only then enter into his glory. Then he started at the beginning with the books of Moses and went on through all the prophets, pointing out everything in the scriptures that referred to him. You know, in this story, Luke was frustrated with his friends and that actually happens quite a bit throughout the Gospels. You can read it and find all kinds of places where Jesus is frustrated with his disciples. In our story today, Jesus is frustrated, but yet he pauses and begins to teach his message again. He reminds them that the Messiah has to suffer. He's not teaching them anything new. He's teaching them things that they already know. He patiently reframes things and gets them back on track. Why is it that we are so impatient with other people? Our, our impatience makes it seem like we have to have everything figured out before we can come to church, rather than church being a place where we kind of live together to figure things out. For us to listen like Jesus, we need to ask questions, be patient, and we need to be present. Verses 28 and 29 says, 
when they came to Emmaus, he acted as if he was going on ahead, but they urged him saying, stay with us. It's nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. This, in this story, Jesus wasn't just hanging out with his disciples. He gave them his full attention. It is so hard to give people our full attention when we live in a world when our schedules are so busy that it just makes our heads spin. I wonder how many opportunities do we miss each and every day to be in relationship with people because we're just so busy. Here in this story, it says that Jesus was, was heading off somewhere else, but, but they urged him to stay, and he did. He allowed himself to be interrupted and spend time with his disciples. Uh, each week, I try real hard to find three things out of the scripture text that we're studying that can help us in our walk with God to, to be more who God wants us to be. And, and, and as a pastor, uh, most weeks, I, I don't have a sense of which one is more important if there's one more important than the other. But this week, I think I can say that being present is the most important part of listening like Jesus. You know, as a pastor, uh, we get to be in special moments in people's lives. Some of those are, are very hard, like uh, when someone passes away, and some of those are real joyful, like, like during weddings. And basically, there are two kinds of weddings we get asked to do. The first one is we get asked to do a wedding because they need a pastor. And, and an officiant. Now, I, I love being a part of those weddings. I love being a, with people who are making a covenant with God to, to be married. Uh, but there's another kind, and this is when people you know ask you to do the wedding. And, and, and these weddings are different. They're not better. Uh, uh, they're just different. You have a relationship with those people. Uh, I'm so excited in Orlando. Uh, in the spring, I'm going to get to go to Orlando uh, to uh, do the wedding of a former Asbury student. And, and it's not because I'm all that special. It's because that we have this relationship with each other. You know, one day I was thinking about why are those weddings so different? And, and why do some ask and others don't? And it kind of hit me one day that the weddings I do for people uh, who I have a relationship with are generally former students who either went on ski trip, youth retreats, or summer camps. People that I was able to spend time with and get to know. We don't build connections with each other in the normal routine of life. We build connections with each other in the empty spaces, in the interruptions. We build relationships while we're on a ski lift going up to the top of the mountain. We build relationships when we're sitting around a campfire with each other. We build relationships when we sit down and have a cup of coffee with someone. For us to listen like Jesus, we have to be willing to give up our plans and be interrupted and be present with people. At the end of our passage, it says, after he took his seat at the table with them, he took the bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Their eyes were opened and they recognized him. They did not recognize him till they ate together. This is why being present could be the most important part of listening like Jesus. People will not see Jesus in us unless we spend time with them and are present in their lives. Let's pray together. Oh God, we 
thank you for this time. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to worship together. Oh God, as we sing, help, we, help us move to be more like you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Uh, as we worship through giving, uh, don't miss coming back next week as we continue to be like Jesus. Next week, we're going to look at how we can speak like Jesus. Let's stand. Let's sing together.
You are the people of God. Go from this place without any shame, timidity, or fear to listen like Jesus. Have a great week.